Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. And today's video will be building this strange, crazy, weird, exotic, uh, million other adjectives that we could call it, aircraft. This is the TACOM 144 scale Lund class Ekranoplan. And we do have to call it an aircraft because it's actually not an airplane. It's a ground effect vehicle. So it's designed not to really fly high up in the air. It's designed to fly just a few feet above the water, uh, but at much faster than what a, a even a high speed boat would be able to go. And of course you see it's got all these massive engines in the front and then all these rocket or missile launchers up on top of it there. So it's a strange one. And I like building the strange stuff like this. Says any one time anyone sees this, they're like, wow, I saw a YouTube story on it, or I saw a History Channel story on it, or, you know, I heard about these things, or what the heck is that? It's just that strange of a vehicle. It always gets people talking. Now, this is the very first uh, production sample to come off the line. So they have been completed, and they actually have been shipped. They're on a, a big container ship on its way over here. Going to sit in that log jam off the coast of uh, Los Angeles for a while. But we estimate that they will be here in early December. And, of course, we have them up for pre-sale on our website, andyshhq.com, and in Europe on andyshhq.eu, if you're interested in picking one of them up. It's a simple kit to put together, uh, lots of big parts that are, you know, fit really well and won't tie you down with a billion little tiny things. So you can get to this building this thing and then start painting on it. And I had a blast doing it. It's something different. It's something you're not going to see all the time. And like I said earlier, it gets people talking. So like I said, I had a lot of fun building it and I'm going to share that with you right now. So let's get started. Okay, let's start on the uh, the front of the fuselage as well as the cockpit. You can see we've got our two little front sections here. I've off camera went ahead and painted the uh, the cockpit here, and it's very very tiny cockpit, and there's only a couple of small little windows in there. But we wanted to use the right colors because I think if you look through the canopy, you will be able to see splashes of color, and they're very very unusual colors on the Russian uh, aircraft. So we use the interior turquoise blue color for the instrument panel, the sides of the chair. It looks like in the pictures I saw, the front chairs are brown, the back chairs are blue. Now that we have that, and I also ran a little black panel liner over it to make some of the parts pop out. Then that will get glued into place just like that. So you can see it fits in there really nicely. We also have to go ahead and put some windows in here. And the windows come on these, uh, they're like little studs on top of a clear piece and it gets just fitted into place just like that. And there's one little one up here as well. I've gone ahead and put this put them in on this side. And what I'm going to do now is I'm I've already gone ahead and done this is on the canopy. I've gone ahead and used some liquid mask to mask that all off. And I'll also go on the outside of here and mask these off too, just so I don't forget and we don't paint over them on accident. So with the cockpit in there now, we can go ahead and the other windows. We will go ahead and glue both of these sides together just like this. So let me get the other two pieces of glass in and then we can begin to actually start to put the canopy in place. Okay, now we can go ahead and put the two halves together. I'm going to start off by just mainly putting glue into the, the pegs on this one side. And then we'll use capillary attraction down these, these links right in through here to get it all put together. This way we know we're going to have a good bond. And so we'll snap that. And then on, once we get all of those pegs glued together, using just a little bit of glue, we should be able to touch it right to the seam, just like that, and then give it a good squeeze. And that should, hopefully you can see the little bit of liquid plastic that's coming out. And once that comes out, we can sand that off and we should have a nice smooth finish. Okay, we have the front of the fuselage glued together. You can see the cockpit inside there. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and glue the canopy on, just like that. And then there's also a roof section that all needs to be put into place. It doesn't want to stay on there without glue, but you get the idea like that. And we also need to attach these pieces here and you see how well they fit they're lining up with those those grooves 
just perfectly there. Just like that, but we'll get those glued in. Now, with that done, I've gone ahead and also glued the windows in on the back of the fuselage. And with that in, all we have to do now is actually just snap these two together. And then, of course, run the glue down the entire surface. And we are ready to basically build the entire fuselage right there. And I do, I still, I've actually masked off those windows. I need to mask off all of these windows as well. And so we'll go ahead and get those glued on. One other quick thing too, uh, the front of here, there is another little canopy that I just started masking, but you see there's a plug behind it. So I've gone ahead and painted the plug black just to create the effect of like, oh, there's a shadow behind it or something. Just so you don't want to have a clear window and then just see the gray plastic behind it. So don't forget about something like that. I'll get all of that glued together and then I have a whole bunch of these parts. These are all the parts that uh, are two-sided. So these are like the, uh, the, the missile tubes, an A and B side, just like this. Very, very simple stuff. Uh, the engine pods, same thing, A and B side, kind of just click together. Oh, I actually go like this here. And you know, you click the two together just like... Oh, I know what's wrong here. I have a top from one side and a bottom from the other side. When you get the actual sides that fit right, then they'll go together like that. Yeah, that's that's what we tried to do here. So there's a whole bunch of that stuff. There are the wing tips, which are just an A and B side too that just get glued together like that. I'm gonna take care of all those little simple parts right now, get them all glued together. Plus we'll also go ahead and glue all of this surface all the way around the, let me see how long it is here, the entire fuselage. And that is a big guy right there. I'm saying this fuselage right here is probably about 16 inches long just in itself there. So let me go ahead and do that and I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like once all that's glued together. And here we are. Here are all of our little assemblies. And most of them, like I was telling you, were just a left and right side or a top and bottom. So we've got part of the tail here was just a left and right side, glued those together, started doing our sanding, our tail planes here our top and bottom very simple same thing with the front wing a top and bottom and do all of our sanding on all that uh, the only thing that was more than one part or excuse me more than two parts are the engine little pods like this this one is glued together it needs to be sanded but this one i left open and unglued so you could see what i was talking about so you've got a top and a bottom and then you've got this whole engine insert just like this that you just drop into place on the front same with the back and sandwich the whole thing back together boom you're done and these are going to get mounted right up here in the front on either side of the fuselage just like that the wings the front wings have a little pontoon on them Let's see if, we, if I pick the right side yes I did so the little pontoon gets glued on just like that and then the wing itself will get glued right into position like that and then I'm going to kind of just dry fit this and show you guys this tail section gets popped into place right here, just like that. It's kind of big. It's, it won't even fit on the camera. And finally, we have our, our missiles. And they are very specific in the way that they go in. They're, they're numbered on the bottom here. So let's see if I got this the right one. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, this is number one. That's why there's no number on it. So one goes there. Three goes here. And then finally, two. And I've got to do obviously a lot of sanding and stuff on it, but you get the general idea. And then once we get that, we can go ahead and attach this giant, giant, giant tail. And that will get fitted just like this. So you see, we've got a very simple process to putting this together. I'm going to get all of these pieces sanded up properly right now and then glue them into place because it's not going to be that difficult to show you, you know, tell you what's happened there. And then we can go ahead, uh, finish off putting masking on the windows, and then we can prime it and paint it. And here is the the bird, the, the acronoplan, all built up, uh, sanded, and with a little bit of primer in some areas to check on it. 
And what a unusual, unusual piece. Now, I know occasionally I might accidentally call this an airplane. I know it's not an airplane, it's a ground effect vehicle, but you know, force of habit, you look at it, I might say that throughout the video. And if I do, I apologize. I do know what it is. Uh, it is not designed to fully fly other than maybe a couple feet off the water, but wow, what a what an unusual piece. Look at the uh, the size and shape of some of this stuff on it here. Uh, I did go in the back and change out the the tubes here or actually they weren't tubes on the original because they were just some plastic uh, plastic pieces there but I changed it out for some brass tubing and I did it also here on the front mainly had to do it is I kept resting the back of this you know while I was working on it and I kept bending the little plastic pieces so finally I was like I'm just cutting these off we've got some real fine brass tubing let's just go ahead and put that on it now I'm going to go ahead and show you the one I've chosen to go with. It's this one right here. It's an all gray body with a real dark blue bottom. Oops, sorry about that. And then it's got a dark gray around in through here around where the blast zone is for the, uh, the missile tubes. So what I need to do right now is I need to find the, the correct colors and then we will come back and start working on it. Okay, here is the Acronoplon with its uh, paint on uh, for the colors here. First of all, you saw I did some NATO black and did some panel lines first before we shot down our gray color, which for the gray color, I used Dark Sea Gray XF54 from Tamiya. And I, in person, I can see him. I can still see, hopefully you can on camera too, like the highlights on the seams in here and on the wings. It's, it's subtle. Remembering this plane is huge. This is a 144 scale airplane right here. And then for the bottom color, it called out a very specific blue for the, for the particular one I chose. And it is this dark, sea, or dark gray blue, which is a very, very bright blue, very pretty color. And Following the instructions, we painted it up onto the line here. You can see up in the front here, it kind of flares up to the wingtip and then meets back down at the other side of the wingtip down there. So a very unusual shape, but I think it looks really, really good on here. And finally, the, the blast area for the... Uh, for the missile tubes. Uh, we did it in a NATO black and then I have slightly, slightly took some of the gray because you know sometimes when you get the, the, the burns from things it kind of has a blackish gray color. We shot a little bit of gray, just a little bit of mist color down each one of those. That is if it fired something it would have shot off a little bit of the excess exhaust off to the side. Now I've gone ahead and shot a coat of clear on here and now we can go ahead and put our decals into place and you can see this gray with the bright blue and then some of these really cool decals on here is really going to make it pop. The only thing I haven't put on yet is this um, aerial for the front because I just know me. I'm not putting this on to the very last because I'll end up breaking it off before I get it done. So let's go ahead and put the decals on. Had a change of plans. Uh, I was just about ready to start the decals and film that for you guys. And then I thought, you know what, I want to create a little bit of a have a weathered effect from like the salt spray hitting the wings and kind of slightly tarnishing the paint. So what I'm going to do here is we, we've painted this in the dark sea gray, like I told you earlier, from Tamiya. But we went and clear coated the entire thing. So when you clear coat, it slightly darkens your paint. So now I've taken a little bit of the dark sea gray, haven't lightened it at all or darkened it. It's just exactly the way it is on the bottle. And we're going to take one of our masks here. This is one for creating like a speckled effect. And because the paint tone will be just slightly different, we're going to go ahead and on the, mostly on the leading edge, back to about halfway point, we're going to put a small amount of, of these little areas. And it's basically going to create the look 
that the uh, the paint has started to to weather a little bit kind of haphazardly from the salt spray from the sun things like that so basically it's just a matter of laying it down and just on the leading edge and then you can actually roll this down like this and just a light light spray and I'm gonna zoom in here for a second and you see what I'm talking about there now it looks way more highlighted in because of the studio light in here it's actually very very faded effect in the in person but it give you the idea of a of a weathered effect so we're going to go ahead and just do all of the leading edges of the wings maybe a little bit of the uh, the front of the engines things like that so let me go ahead and do that <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do a little weathering on here now. So we're just taking a thin layer of clean, odorless mineral spirits, paint thinner. Just putting a thin little coat on there. And I'm just gonna briefly show you, we're gonna do the whole entire aircraft here and taking our dark gray panel liner, because it's already a wet effect, it'll wanna flow much better into all the little crevices. And even when you see the little spots, you'll see after a few seconds, they mainly start to disappear because it just wants to flow into every one of the panel lines. Main thing you want to do too is when you dip the brush, make sure you tap the piece right here on the edge so you don't get a big, big pile of it come flowing out on you. But do you see how that just goes on there? And most of the area where you pushed it on kind of disappears. And if you get one that's a little bit heavy, always keep a cotton swab around that you can just blot it and take care of it. But that's really going to make all of your panel lines pop out quite a bit. So obviously there's a lot to do on this particular airplane. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on that, do the whole plane with it, just to kind of make the things pop. I think it also look good with our weathering that we've already done underneath there. So I'll take care of that and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. And here is our completed, and I have to say, very unusual model. Remember, not an airplane. I won't call it an airplane again. It's the Ecroplan. And as you can see, it is very, very unusual. In fact, uh, building it over the last couple of days here in the store, I've had more people ask about that or you know want to talk about that than I think of any other model I've built in quite a long time over here and the blue really thinks I think makes makes it pop out quite a bit and I'm glad I had the actual color that they call out for it really really a stunning piece now as you saw in the, during the build that the uh, the kit itself goes together pretty easily it's a lot of uh, simple little uh, sub assemblies you need to put together and then finally putting them all into building this this monster here so besides having the uh, the vertical and horizontal stabilizer being absolutely massive on this uh, this aircraft as well as those unusual looking forward wings the eight monster engines in the front of this vehicle and I actually did a little from reading on this and found out why they had to put them up forward is because the vehicle only travels a few feet above the water and if you notice that the it has a tendency to go nose up a little bit this keeps all of the ocean spray from going inside those engines and flooding them out if they were further back on the aircraft the uh, salt water would be constantly be getting kicked up inside there whereas with the nose up and so far forward it is less likely to get any ocean spray inside so just a, a little bit of uh, history on that particular part and hopefully too you can see a little bit better in the the weathering uh, sometimes when you're watching the weathering get, get put on, the lights and then the, uh, the paint thinner kind of have a lot of reflection. But now hopefully you can see how all those panels really pop on this particular kit. 
Now, this is the uh, the very first ones to come off the production line, so they will be available sometime in early December, we are told, and uh, have a retail in the United States of about $55. So a very nice kit at a, a reasonable price and a lot of fun. And definitely, when you put it on your shelf, the people are going to be asking about it, just, just looking at the general overall shape of it. Very, very cool kit. So that's it. I want to uh, take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.